and welcome to this special edition of Talk Time. My guest today is Mr. Paul Lingdo, working president of the United Democratic Party, a leading regional political party in Meghalaya. By the way, viewers, Paul Lingdo, the former president of the influential Kasi Students Union, is one of the flag bearers of regionalism, not just in Meghalaya, but in the entire Northeast. Mr. Paul Lingdo, once again, welcome to Talk Time. Thank you so much, Vesbir. Uh, now you see, uh, you had been doing regional politics. You were a student leader, uh, one of the most firebrand student leaders in your time. And then you, uh, of course, transformed yourself into a politician. Uh, you have been with the UDP, which is one of the leading uh, regional political parties. You are a part of the ruling alliance now in Meghalaya. My question is, how do you assess, first of all, the future of regionalism, not just in Meghalaya, but across the Northeast? Well, I think we are undergoing a certain phase of politics in this country uh, where, you know, for the first time, uh, the uh, regional parties uh, have been considerably seen as weak. Uh, but uh, this is a temporary phase because if you look back uh, to history, yeah. uh, after, uh, I'm giving you the example of Meghalaya. You know, when the state was first created, the APHLC, uh, all parties, the all leaders party, conference, yes, yes, had led the government for the first full five years, the first ten year after statehood, and uh, after that also, regionalism continued to be uh, forced to reckon with, and uh, at one point of time, yeah. the UDP had as many as twenty MLAs of its own in the assembly. But what we are witnessing today, uh, I think, uh, is uh, because of a, a multiplicity of reasons, uh, there is an upsurge of uh, the Hindu verb of politics. And uh, this has uh, considerably impacted on regional parties. And, uh, but I feel that uh, uh, we are certainly down, but mm -hmm. not out as uh, regional entities mm -hmm. and that uh, in a country yeah. with diverse identities, no. uh, regionalism will continue to be. So regionalism uh, will uh, survive uh, according to you. Now my right. question is, uh, Paul, uh, you see, most of the regional parties, let's take the case of the Northeastern region, including Meghalaya, most of the regional parties are aligned, are alliance partners of the BJP or BJP is an alliance partner of the combined where regional parties are also alliance partners. Uh, now, is there a fear because the Congress and the BJP are two big national political parties. Today, of course, BJP is in a much more dominant position. It's the ruling party at the center has an absolute right, right. majority under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It has got several states in the Northeast under the BJP rule, Assam, Tripura, Manipur, where BJP is the leading partner. You have seen the decisive victory in Arunachal Pradesh. My question is, Absolutely. is there a fear sometimes that today you are alliance partners, tomorrow a bigger party like the BJP may actually gobble up, may integrate, the regional parties might get assimilated with the BJP. It's, it's, it's individual choice. There is no harm in it. BJP is a recognized national political party. Uh, you know, people have accepted it. So do you think that fear is there? No, I think uh, as long as regionalism continues to be uh, an important and uh, feature of the polity of this country, it will not be wiped out. Uh, the face that I'm referring to, uh, the upsurge of national political parties and especially the BJP, uh, to me that would be uh, a temporary face because uh, uh, if you look at the agenda of the regional parties in the Northeast, these are uh, these manifest uh, the the diverse uh, needs, the agenda of the local ethnic population, mm -hmm. and especially uh, the in the context of India, we are uh, microscopic indigenous communities. Right, and uh, who else would? Uh, better understand the aspirations of these communities other than uh, parties which are rooted in the soil of the Northeast. Now, another trend which has developed again from Meghalaya, see earlier it was the 
Assam Gana Parishit, which was a big national party today, uh, sorry, big regional party. But today, uh, the fortunes of the AGP has really, really diminished because in the last Lok Sabha elections, uh, the AGP failed to win even a single seat. My question is, but it is quite the opposite in Meghalaya, at least now. The right. National People's Party, the NPP, has is not only the dumped regional political party in Meghalaya, which is leading the coalition, uh, but it has spread its tentacles in different parts of the northeastern region, whether it is uh, it's part of the government in Manipur, it has a presence in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, tried to make a big presence actually, and it has a presence in Nagaland. It is trying to have, they also contested the Mizoram elections. Now, do you think regional parties with a pan northeast spread, uh, do you think that is a new trend? How do you look at this development? Yes, this is a, a new trend that we are witnessing in this part of the country. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you look deeply, uh, one of the reasons why uh, regionalism today has uh, taken a back seat is one, the impact of the media, uh, the reach of the media. I mean, uh, 2014, when I had contested the Lok Sabha elections, yeah. uh, the BJP candidate was a total dark horse. But he managed to, to, uh, to garner almost a lack of votes, all because of the media campaign of so, Prime Minister so, Modi. So, so that cut into your vote bank? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the local BGP candidate was a total non-entity. He was, mm -hmm. he was non, not known at all. But he managed to secure that many number of votes, uh, primarily because of the uh, campaign, uh, the high-tech campaign of Prime Minister Modi. Second is also the fact that, uh, you, you know, till today, Meghalaya elections and Meghalaya politics continues to be personality-oriented. It is centered on a person. And it is not like in the earlier days, uh, in the 70s and the 80s, uh, people would go and vote for yeah. the HSPDP, for instance, uh, without knowing the name of the candidate, they would only look for that particular symbol, symbol the, the lion. Mm -hmm. It had that much of an impact uh, on local politics. Today, uh, that has faded. People would, uh, it, it's centered around individuals. Now, one of the common allegations you hear, uh, especially from people who lose, or for that matter, parties who lose, is the, oh, well, my opponents the, who have won have money and muscle power, quote unquote. That is one of the charts. So do you really think money and muscle power is really, uh, you know, one of the dominant feature of elections in, um, in, in this country today? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, the influence of money and muscle power has seeped into politics, even in Meghalaya. Mm -hmm. And uh, in constituencies which had earlier elected, you know, lecturers and professors, today you would yeah. find business magnates. Uh, and coal barons replacing uh, those uh, highly educated professors. Uh, that is the, the new so, culture. So, so culture. are you indirectly saying that in the recent Meghalaya elections, whether it is the state elections, whether it is the other council elections, is the coal barons also played a leading role as far as pumping money? Well, uh, coal lobby has always been very influential in Meghalaya. And to that extent, uh, people who are in business uh, have a certain amount, a significant amount of uh, advantage Absolutely. over the, those who are uh, less privileged in terms of resources. Uh, but the other, the more important and worrying trend uh, today is that uh, people who with uh, acumen in administration, in governance, uh, have been reduced to a minority. And this is where I think, uh, as I believe that whenever you hit rock bottom, you can't go any further down, you can always only rise up. So regionalism, uh, which has taken deep roots in, in the Northeast, and especially in Meghalaya at one point of time, will, will find its feet again. Regionalism in Meghalaya at least will find its feet again. That is what Mr. Paul Lingdo firmly believes on that note. We go for a short break. Stay on, don't go away. I'll be right back.
welcome back i am in conversation with mr paul the working president of the udp one of the leading regional political parties in meghalaya uh mr paul lingdo you know we have 25 mps from the northeast in parliament uh now the issue is we call ourselves the northeastern region eight states but we have only 25 mps although we have just about 45 million people now the question is how long uh you know we are going to stay like this do you think there is need to move away from this system of proportional representation do you think uh, considering uh, the difficulties of this region considering the uniqueness of this region the remote location considering that we are surrounded by foreign neighbors do you think it is necessary to have a work out a mechanism whereby we can have more number of MPs, increase the number of seats in the Northeast. Are you in favor of that? Absolutely, absolutely. What, uh, what, what are your arguments in favor of this? See, apart from the factors that you have mentioned, uh, a country that calls itself democratic uh, cannot deny the aspirations of linguistic, ethnic minorities purely on the basis of their number. And uh, I recall a particular instance where a uh, minister from South India at one point of time had told uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi yeah. that uh, uh, while on the one hand you praise or you pat us on the back for our uh, active role in uh, controlling population and our performance in terms of uh, controlling population. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, uh, while you give us a, a pat on the back, on the other hand, you also slap us on the face by reducing our numbers in Parliament because of the precise reason that we are successful in implementing the population reforms. So, while at the, on the one hand, you pursue a policy of advocating less population, yeah. on the other hand, you also penalise us for performing well on that front. So in the Northeast, uh, because of our porous borders with Bangladesh, because of the geopolitical location uh, and the uh, presence of China uh, yeah. at, uh, very close to Arunachal Pradesh, and then you have uh, Myanmar uh, with its very unstable polity. All these are reasons for Northeast getting the attention it has not got so far. Therefore, you're saying that number of representatives in parliament to echo the sentiments of different groups and communities is necessary. It increase. is necessary, yes. It has to be rationalized now, and not on the basis of population. Now, one of the reasons why the voice of the Northeast is not heard in the corridors of power is because 25 MPs belong to different political parties. Now, the civil society always says, no, we must rise above, uh, you know, political affiliations and speak about for the Northeast in one single voice. Do you think, Paul, it is really possible because at the end of the day, everybody represents a different political party. Is it really possible for the politicians to rise above politics and speak in one voice? Now, now everybody has their own own X to grind or own brownie points to score. I wish it were that easy. And I wish uh, we could rise above the rhetorics. Uh, unfortunately, that has not been the case for the simple reason that even within the communities of the Northeast, yeah. the diversity is so huge. Uh, I mean, you talk about uh, tribals, uh, just tribal communities, uh, but look at their culture and food habits, uh, preferences. There's so much of uh, diversity. Totally diverse. Yeah. Yes. So uh, that makes the case very difficult. Uh, the other thing I wish to point out here is uh, this issue of uh, lack of representation of the Northeast can at least be addressed immediately by ensuring that the Rajya Sabha, which is the Council of States, yeah. should have equal number of MPs irrespective of the size and population of that state. For the simple reason that when you have a Council of States, you know, as opposed to the Lok Sabha, which is, uh, the, uh, yeah. which is the house of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rajya Sabha is the council of states. How do you factor in population, uh, the size of the state, uh, while, while determining the seats in so, the Rajya Sabha? So that means you are saying that as a first step, yes. this, like, uh, this right. discre discrepancy has to be resolved. It has to be corrected first in the Rajya Sabha. The council of states should first be 
have an equal number of representatives irrespective of the size and population of that state. Now, what about lower houses in the states? Now, we have a state assembly in each of the northeastern states, uh, right. 60 members, 40 members even in some uh, of the states. Now, question is, do you need, do you think, you know, as you very rightly said, and we all know that even in the northeast, there are so much of groups and subgroups, sub-tribes and so on and so forth. We've got about 400 tribes and sub-tribes. Now, taking into consideration, is it also necessary to have a lower house in each of the states? Well, in the Northeast, as you are well aware, uh, while uh, the legislature is unicameral in the sense that, uh, for, for instance, Meghalaya, then uh, Nagaland, Tripura, Mizoram, uh, we have a unicameral legislature, yeah. which is the state assembly. Uh, but at the other, uh, the other structure that is in existence, uh, that in fact pre-existed the states, are the autonomous, autonomous district, councils. district councils. And these uh, fairly represent the different communities. Different communities. So that you, you don't see much of a need for that? Not, not immediately. Uh, you are yourself, by the way, a member of the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council. Right. Uh, okay, now, now you see, what is the road ahead? How does one speak in a single voice in parliament where you know the lawmakers sit discuss and f formulate rules and pass laws i think what as is a, the way out i think as a first step uh all these years at least when mr pa someone was around uh the northeast mps forum was very vibrant very active that uh, should be revived and uh, it should meet at least uh uh, twice, if not more, uh, in a year, and certainly before each session of Parliament, yeah. which, it, uh, which has uh, today become a totally, it has become a totally defunct uh, Absolutely. Uh, body. Now, at least on common issue, you you you, right. you you said that it is not easy to come together, rise above politics, but at least on common issues, you can be together, isn't it? Yes, yes. What are some of the common issues, according to you? If you if I'm ask, asking you to list three of them, what are the three common issues as far as noticed? is concerned which the MPs can actually take up. See, one is the e economy of the region. We've only been hearing about look ease, act ease, but nothing much has happened on the ground till today. Two is uh, issues of uh, the ethnic, uh, the demographic balance of the Northeast. Uh, you have issues like the CAB, uh, which have uh, tended to uh, divide even opinion in the Northeast. Yeah. Uh, uh, there has to be a uniformity of approach on CEB, issues like, like the CEB. And three is uh, considering the geopolitical, uh, uh, the geopolitical uh, nature yeah. uh, of, of uh, international politics vis-a-vis -vis Northeast. I think it is high time that more attention is paid to problems which keep cropping up in the Northeast. Instance today you have floods in Assam, yeah. which have not drawn any attention in the either in the national media or. See, uh, I recently held a debate whether the, I called it floods of flood of silence. Now floods yeah. today in Assam is not even an election issue. Absolutely. And the student groups and other pressure groups they have been earlier said oh floods should be made a national problem. They are also not talking much on these issues. Nobody yes. uh, and is it? down market is it not an issue is it not a glamorous issue that it's is it why do political parties refuse to make this an election issue even what is your thought looking from a slight distance well i think uh, uh, to, today uh, we suffer from uh, a problem which is that uh, we are out of the consciousness the national consciousness we the northeast you mean yes we are in periphery of the national mind which is why uh, a house uh, uh, that collapsed in Mumbai got 15 minutes of uh, national media, national media last the entire evening. Last Whereas evening. the floods in Assam did not cover even two were not even mentioned. That is a very important point that uh, Mr. Paul Lingdo is making. On that note, I go for another short break. Stay on, don't go away. I'll be right back once again. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm still in conversation with Mr. Paul Lingdo, the president of the UDP. 
Uh, Mr. Polingdo, you have been the president of the Khasi Students Union. Now my question is, Northeast is one of the unique regions in the country where every community has a student group. Therefore, they are quite influential as well. Apart from that, there are there is an apex organization called the Northeast Students Organization. Right, right. Now my question to you is, all these student groups, you, had, you, you, you know it well because you headed the KSU, uh, all these student groups are only keeping themselves busy or rather I'll revise my statement, I said they're mostly keeping themselves busy with political issues. In Assam, the All Assam Students Union is busy with the NRC issue. They have always been busy with the voters list. Fine, these are critical issues that may affect the population, that may affect the indigenous people in the long run, fine. But at the same time, we don't see the student groups, which are the biggest pressure groups, in fact, they can move and shake things if they want. They never talk about economic issues. They never talk about higher education scenario in the Northeast is terrible. Thousands of people are going outside to study and, and not in great institutions. They are joining, the, enrolling themselves in XYZ institutions, paying huge hefty amount of money. This is just a capital outflow from the Northeastern region. Had we have these institutions of higher learning, vocational education, skill development, all this, if it had been in our, our kids, would not have had to go out. My question to you, why do you think student groups are only interested, they call themselves non-political organizations, but they have a fascination only for political issues. Do you think it's just a platform for getting into real politics? Well, I think you have to be fair to these student bodies here. Uh, if you look at the genesis of uh, the Assam movement, yeah. for instance, uh, it was the circumstances prevailing at that point of time. And the fact that uh, people had suddenly come to notice that there was a sudden rise in the number of voters in the list. belonging to a particular community. community. Yeah. Uh, and that had uh, 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 triggered a reaction amongst the public. Yeah. And, and uh, since the political parties uh, at that point of time had uh, something to do with these communities. They were the vote, vote banks of a particular political party uh, and uh, they were also wooed by other no, uh, I get your, parties. I get your sense, Paul. You know, so, I get your so sense. Student I get uh, unions had to jump in because yes. nobody they were, they were else was willing to the take up the cost. Circumstances compel them to yes. Uh, yes. Uh, jump into these kind of... But my question is, can't we also move things parallelly? Okay, you do these things, you raise your voice on this issue. Now the ASU is raising its voice on the NRC issue. We want an updated NRC. Everybody in Assam wants it. Right. All right thinking people wants it. We want, mm. we don't want, and nobody wants illegal migrants names either in the voters list or in the citizens list. And that is right. the NRC. Now question is, can't the student groups also raise their voice on education? Can't they assist in investment? Can't they talk about development? Can't they talk about corruption prevailing in society? We, we don't hear these things much. No, no. Uh, I, I think we, you have to look at it from a very rational perspective, which is that, uh, of course, when the student movement first started in the Northeast, uh, they were all uh, centered around the issue of infiltration. Yeah. And that is what united the student bodies to come up with NISO, for instance, the Northeast Students' Organization. Yeah. But to be fair to these uh, student uh, unions, after the 80s, in the 90s, for instance, when we went to uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee, uh, we had uh, made, uh, placed our demand for having a separate ministry for the Northeast. That's how donor was created. Yeah. Uh, then we we spoke about the economic uh, disparities and disadvantage of the of the northeast education. It was because we pushed through the nineties that I am came up in in, in Shillong, for instance. So uh, uh, I, I think it, it is just that by its very nature, uh, student politics is uh, based on this appeal to emotions. And especially uh, the, the, the issues which political parties would like to uh, keep under wraps, issues like infiltration uh, or corruption. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, if, if you follow this up, the issue of corruption in, in Assam and Meghalaya, the Meghalaya House deal, for instance, CBI inquiry into several scams in Meghalaya, all these were taken up by 
the, the KSU when I was the president. So, so but I think uh, an issue like uh, illegal immigration, which continues to be the single major threat to, to the, the identity, identity. Of indigenous population in the Northeast. Yes, will continue to have uh, a durable appeal. And as long as this issue is not resolved, it will continue to be so, so to hold center now, stage. Now, Assam is in the final stages of having an NRC. Now, we have heard that Manipur is interested. Right. Uh, now, Nagaland is trying to have its own version of the indigenous people's list. They are calling the residents of indigenous in a resi residents of indigenous inhabitants of Nagaland or something like that. R I I N mm -hmm. is the terminology there. Register register of indigenous inhabitants of Nagaland. R I I N. So they are trying to do that. Uh, so do you think uh, across the board in the northeastern region a citizens needs to be prepared, including Meghalaya? Yes, very much. Uh, for the simple reason that. Uh, as in the case of Meghalaya, you know, the, the major problem that we have is that because of our uh, uh, porous borders and the fact that uh, Meghalaya also, also Shillong is a transit point where people can just use the national highways yeah. to reach to other parts of the Northeast, uh, checking uh, illegal immigration becomes such a problem. And especially when you have Assam, which already had uh, has uh, about uh, 10 lakh Bangladeshis and these can easily uh, creep into uh, Meghalaya, mix now, with now the there is, what local about, population. What is your stand on the demand for ILP, for example, inner line permit in Meghalaya? Uh, what is your party's stand? What is your personal stand? We, we, we have always supported the idea of ILP. And uh, today, uh, the, the latest that we have heard is that uh, talks, uh, I mean discussions with the civil society groups have uh, reached a stage where the ingredients of the ILP will uh, finally find their way into the State Tenancy Act. Okay. Now, now, are, as a coalition partner of the government in Meghalaya, what will be your advice to the government led by Mr. Kornet Sangma as far as NRC? Do you need an NRC in Meghalaya? Uh, when you consider that NRC was first conceived in the uh, 1950s, 1951, uh, it would of course be difficult to update uh, documents when the state had only come into being in 1972. Yeah. But yes, based on uh, records like the census records, yeah. electoral rolls, these can form the basis for compiling an NRC for Meghalaya. Okay. It is doable. All right. Finally, uh, we know we have ourselves discussed a lot of problems. At the end of the day, do you think, are you optimistic about things in the region? This is my final question. I have always been an optimist and uh, hope springs eternal in the human breast. I see the huge potential of Northeasterners uh, who are gifted in many ways. If you talk about our strengths, uh, Shillong, music, football, cricket, uh, these are our inherent strengths. And uh, therefore, uh, considering the opportunities that we uh, can access today. I'm, I'm very optimistic that things will look up. Things will look up. Absolutely. Right we all want that things should look up. On that positive note, Mr. Paul Lingdo, thank you very much for being on my program.